All right, what we see here is the Motorola MyCom HF radio developed by Mobat, which is uh, Motorola and Bartle in Israel. Marketed in the United States, also used a lot here. Um, this particular one is a trunk mounted version with a standalone control head. This is the uh, radio module. It is uh, very rugged, all die cast metal construction. Uh, the control head is connected with a uh, seven, 17 feet control cable. And we have also a power cord that is about 20 feet long. The um, power cord has two fuses. Uh, one fuse, the red one, protects the power amplifier, 20 amps. And the blue one protects the, uh, the receiver exciter with about 7 amps. And they come together at the end of the power cable. This way the receiver exciter doesn't suffer uh, voltage variations caused by a uh, current draw when you transmit the power amplifier. Now there is obviously a speaker. Motorola as well that plugs in here at the end of this uh, control cable so the speaker can be close to the control module and as said plugs in here. The back of the radio there is a, a connector uh, 15 pin D I think it is for the programmer but programming can also be accomplished with a programming interface uh, that uh, I can show you later it plugs in here and then you can set things like uh, memories you can set things like uh, uh, the master control oscillator correction uh, power levels for the different power settings is all possible but normally you wouldn't need that because it's all set already now this radio is uh, ALE, uh, uh, ALE capable, which is uh, a method to test the uh, automatically to test the propagation by sending out predetermined uh, data patterns and then being received on the other side, and the radios automatically test different parts of the HF spectr spectrum to see uh, uh, what propagation is the best by counting bit errors in the uh, in the predetermined patterns. Uh, it's called uh, automatic link establishment. There are several versions of it. This radio has the uh, the latest version of that. I don't know exactly how that works. I'm not a specialist on uh, ALE, so I'm not going to go into details on that one. But there is a lot of information on the internet if you want to learn more about it. And like I said, this radio is capable of that. There is hams actually that uh, that use ALE. It's always surprised me a little bit because I thought sending out these data patterns without a station identifier is illegal but they do it anyway don't ask me how anyway let's turn on the uh, unit and see what happens first we're going through a self-test and as you will see the radio will pass that the radio is uh, capable of transmitting from uh, 1.6 I think it is 1.6 to uh, 30 megahertz. The smaller step size is 10 hertz. It has a whole bunch of memories that you can pre-program either by the computer interface or from the front. Uh, it is capable of lower sideband, upper sideband, AM equivalent, FSK and CW. And we'll go through the menus to show you how that all works. Let's first see what it's doing by just tuning across the band here. Like I said, the radio has uh, lots of pre-programmable memories. I think it's 200 programmable from the front or through the uh, computer control cable, uh, which plugs in here instead of the microphone. Uh, but you can also just punch in the frequency or go in different step sizes. Now you can set the step size through the menu. As you can see this is the 10 Hz step size. 100 Hz, 1 kHz, 10 kHz, 100 kHz, 1 MHz and so on. The easiest is to step through the channels using the uh, 1 kHz uh, uh, step size and then you can always go finer if needed. Somebody isn't exactly on frequency. And from that, you know, that way you can actually tune 
across the bend pretty comfortable. So that works pretty well. Uh, there is a whole bunch of other things possible with this radio. I'm not going to show it all, but I just wanted to give you an impression. Let's look at some other things here. There is an uh, AB VFO, just like a ham radio. So this one was still set for 70 meg uh, uh, 40 meters, which is kind of quiet in the middle of the day, but you get the idea. If we go to the menu, we can actually uh, uh, see a couple of other possibilities here. Now it is possible to go for the channel mode. Not already using channel mode, which was pre-programmed by somebody else. Not a higher frequencies. My antenna is not tuned. I think these are airplanes. Or a weather station. Somebody programmed the 60 meter channels. So that's in there as well. But again during the day don't expect miracles. This is the higher end of the band. And this is the low end of the band. Eighty meters, forty meters. And like I said, we can also go back to uh, channel mode. Now band is upper sideband and lower sideband, so the radio is capable of lower sideband and upper sideband. And you can also program it for the other modes, but that is not directly accessible unless you program it that way. Go back to frequency mode, and then we're back to the normal step sizes. Let's see some other features here. I wanted to show you the uh, power that the radio can do. It's basically a um, 125 watt radio, PEP and average, and we can show you that. I can turn on the squelch, get rid of the noise. Uh, for instance, if I go to one uh, eight, that would be 160 meters. And if we look at the power that we get with that, we'll switch to the dummy load, so we won't bother anybody. As you see, we get about. We get about 125 watts. I have a 250 watt slug in this watt meter, so the full scale is 250. And we get uh, exactly to 125. Now let's uh, look at some other frequencies. Uh, obviously, uh, 5 megahertz, we already said. Um, well, let's do 80 meters, that's probably better. Uh, 3800. Zero, zero. 80 meters good power just to show you, you can do all hand bands so we go to uh, 5 uh, 403 I think it is that is 60 meters and we get About the same, a little bit more there. We go to 7100, which is 40 meters. That was 40 meters, about 130 watts. We go to, well, that's 20 we already, well, I haven't shown you, I haven't showed you the transmit capability. Um, 20. 
getting closer to 140 there uh what's the next one uh i don't even know one uh once uh, i don't know well let's go to 21 three and that is the 15 meter band Got about 140 there. Now we got uh, 24. That would be the 12 meter band. <whistles> 125 there. Let's go to uh, 28. 800. Which would be the 10 meter band. There's about 140 there. So that is the uh, the frequencies that the radio covers. It can also transmit outside those bands uh, for the ones that are really have to see that capability. About 140 watts does that too. So uh, as you can see, radio is capable of uh, quite a lot of. Uh, frequencies and it does that without any lockouts or or uh, uh, locked out blocked areas none of that so it will cover everything between what i think it's 1.6 to uh 230 well we can try that quickly 1.6 does it transmit there yeah it does i don't know that that must be the lowest uh, let's see, or one zero zero out of range. Yeah, it doesn't do that. So it starts from 1.6 all the way to 30 megahertz and uh, anywhere you want by just punching in the frequency or program the memory channels. Like I said, it does have a squelch. I have that turned on now. Now it's turned off. Let's go back to uh, to uh, the 20 meter bands. Squelch is off when I turn on the antenna and now we're back on the antenna no more dummy load we are on upper sideband and uh, we can tune across the band again if we want to do that not too much going on today propagation is miserable but the audio is quite good the radio also can be set for different bandwidth. It has an IF DSP, so uh, the bandwidths are made through a digital processor, signal processor, and I will try to find in the menus how to set that. I might have to crack the manual for that, but uh, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, here you see the menu for uh, power. There is uh, five, four different levels. The highest is uh, 125. I think the lowest is like 10. Uh, we have mode. We can do single sideband, uh, AM equivalent, or pilot tone. This is a, a single sideband with a rest carrier. This is used in the professional world a lot. We have bandwidth 2.1. 2.7, 3.0, 3 3.3, .3. Uh, we can do CW, and we can do uh, FSK, this is basically narrow band with shifted carrier point. So uh, for hand work we use this here. So I can do that too, we can go to different AGC levels, slow is what we use for single sideband. So, as you can see, bandwidth, modes, uh, power levels, it's basically the same as what you would do with a ham radio. Can all be, uh, be programmed with this radio. Here is another interesting menu. We can do clarifier. We can do notch filter. Hang on for a second. DSP notch filter
and we can turn that feature off. There is a clipper for the modulation, it's like an RF clipper, speech processor if you want. There is a noise blanker that you can turn on and off. There is an attenuator. And here we're back to the uh, beginning again. Now this is the ALE. Like I said, I know nothing about ALE. You have to study the manual yourself, but you can program different versions, different nets, everything is uh, programmable about the kitchen sink. Like I said, there is a squelch. The squelch does not work on AGC, it works on, uh, they call it the syllabic squelch, so when there is modulation it will open independent of the signal strength, which is obviously for single sideband preferred over a uh, carrier squelch. So that is basically what this radio can do in a nutshell. And um, like I said, there isn't too much going on on the band. I would have liked to show you a little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah, it's pretty strong. That is pretty dead today. Let's uh, have a look at the um, at the rear uh, of this radio. Show you a little bit more of the hardware. All right, this is basically the back bottom of the radio. Like I said, the whole thing is a die-cast uh, aluminum or zinc, whatever it is. And uh, this is the power connector. It has a D connector, as you can see. And there is three pins, one for ground, uh, two for plus 13.8 uh, volts, one for the exciter, one for the power amplifier. This is the uh, SO239 antenna connector, standard amphenol. Now, this radio is capable of driving a automatic antenna tuner, and it does that throughout the uh, 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 RF connector. So the RF connector in that case will carry, well, obviously the RF, but also the DC power for the antenna tuner, and also the data stream to set the antenna tuner at the right band. That is all done through a single connection, coaxial connection. And uh, you don't need any other... Uh, uh, connection for that. Now the radio does have more inputs for diagnostics and uh, uh, programming. This radio does have the latest firmware so you won't have to mess with that. Uh, here you can see the ID plate is basically the Micom version with the uh, Micom 2E with the extended uh, trunk mount option, which is the uh, separate control unit. I think it's called the Micom 2T something, I don't know, but it's basically all the same family of radios. And like I said, it's made by uh, uh, Motorola uh, Bartel, which was called uh, Mobat in Israel. It's an excellent design. Um, this radio actually comes with a Mounting, I have not unpacked that. I didn't want to do that. Um, so this is brand new. This is the cable that plugs in the bag. I was tell telling you about that actually is uh, also included. This is uh, mounting hardware for the uh, for the mounting. So that's all brand new. That came with it. I uh, did not want to unpack it. But this allows you to uh, to basically 
place this in your car, bolt it down the mounting and then you can place the radio in the mounting with a quick release mechanism so if you want to take it out of the radio without having to unscrew all kind of uh, uh, screws and you name it and bolts that can be done this radio is also sold as a military radio it's exactly the same radio this has a different color army green so they also have been sold to the military but uh, uh, this one uh, was used for uh, uh, civilian applications now they're very popular with embassies you know uh, expeditions africa cars you see these these uh, all-terrain vehicles with these long whips on them well that's basically this radio that allows you to communicate over large distances on the hf band anywhere where you want with a relatively high power like i said 20 foot connection interconnect cables between the car battery as well as the uh, control unit so you would mount this uh, on the dashboard and the radio module can either go on your chair or on your seat or in the trunk whatever you want and that is uh, all we have now we're not done wait there is more this is the uh, actual programming cable for the um, for setting all the parameters and programming your own channels if you want it's basically an RS-232 connector but with this USB interface you can uh, program it through a uh, USB on your computer and what happens is you take this off the microphone and then you plug in this RJ45 in here and then you connect this to the RS-232 uh, uh, in your computer and then you start the software that came with it the software allows you to program channels set power levels uh, for the different channels and whatever you want but you can also program more basic uh, uh, parameters like the uh, TXCO if that is a little bit off frequency you can correct for that now this is all done already for this one no need to mess around with it this thing's dead on frequency and the power levels are good but uh, you can change that if for whatever reason that's necessary so we got that too manuals both instruction and service manuals is included you can also download that from the internet but uh, that is all included as a PDF so uh, it's pretty complete all right back to the 20 meter band That's basically it. The uh, Motorola MyCom 2E DSP radio, trunk mounted version, in excellent condition. Actually, the uh, control unit like, like, looks like it's brand new. Microphone as well. And a piece that had never been used. Very good radio. Perfect radio for your car or field day or on your desk. Thank you for watching this video.